Hi, I'm Bob, and I'm going to show you how to install a solar roof jack. Solar roof jack is the name of a company that makes a special uh, device that allows you to extend one of the roof jacks on your roof in such a way that you can get your panels to fit more efficiently on your roof, solar panels that is. So I'm showing this area of the roof right now, which has uh, the racking feed. I'm using Iron Ridge um, Flashfoot 2 with their XR100 rail and I've already put my feet down and it became apparent that my roof jacks were in the way during the planning stage and so I looked on the internet and I found a solution called solarroofjack.com and their, uh, their flashing basically carries all of the requirements necessary so I could get it past my um, local uh, AHJ to get my plans approved. So this uh, is how the roof jack will look when it's installed. So we have uh, two solar roof jacks here, which are relocating um, jacks that would have gone straight up 12 inches. And it's putting them underneath the rails. And there's two ways you can do this. Solar roof jack uh, recommends that you, you basically drive the output all the way to the closest edge of the solar panel. But there's another consideration which was kind of important here is that we get a lot of leaves and trees on the side of the house. So instead what I did was, um, actually it's probably not instead, it's definitely the closest is to go straight up, but by going straight up I leave less area of pipe across the roof that would uh, block the leaves. I've also installed my panels landscape which is kind of unusual just because I have a hipped roof it just makes the panels more efficient, the panel layout. So that's why I have actually more rails than most people would have interfering with the two inch pipe from the, p the solar roof jack. So solar roof jack also sends something, sells something uh, called a limbo pipe. So I had the issue where because my rails are going to be just uh, less than a quarter of an inch lower than my two inch pipe would allow, I actually had to flatten out those ABS two inch pipes. And that's using the Limbo Jack product, which is over there. Show me. Why don't you just point stick to it right here. These guys, and you just put these flat sections of the pipe uh, where the rail is going to go across, just like this one here. These rails aren't set yet. They're actually going to be a little bit higher than that pipe. Now these pipes for the solar roof jack, they can only run either up or out to the side. They can never be oriented downward. And that's to prevent a gas bubble from forming in your sewer system, which would keep your toilets from uh, uh, draining properly. <laughs> <laughs> they may not flush <laughs> is what would happen. And the system comes with, uh, so this flashing right here, and it does not come with a limbo pipe, that's extra. But it comes with this flashing uh, that includes the aluminum flashing and this angled piece. It also comes with um, a na two 90 degree fittings and this cool cap. Show the cap. And that keeps the rain out. So basically, the idea is that the gas is allowed to enter and exit through the top but the rain can't get in. So in the old pipe systems, um, like this jack over here, which actually was broken when this it was one? built. Sorry. That one? Yeah. Oh. They're open and the rain can get in them and it's not a problem. That's what he's talking about. The pool is green. Oh, whatever. Um, but on these pipes, you have to keep the rain out of them because this intersection point that occurs inside of here is an open space. There's not a 90 degree L inside of there that's sealing it and making it watertight. There is, however, a rubber gasket that seals in there and keeps the rainwater from running down the pipe. But I wouldn't want to put a whole lot of rainwater down there. It would just collect. So the idea is that this cap will keep all the rain out of the pipe, but still allow it to vent. So how do we do it? Oops. Showed the pool. <laughs> Yeah, we can edit. Okay. So this is a jack that I want to move. This is a two inch jack. The solar j roof jack company only supports um, two inch and one and a half, I suppose anywhere in between, um, roof jacks. And the first thing that has to be done is basically to, according to the directions, is remove this flashing. But I actually talked to uh, the inventor of 
the reef jack because I was concerned about basically making this section of the roof less waterproof than it already is by removing all the nails that are in this flashing. And I'm sure I could do it and make it waterproof and seal it up, but I just thought, well, what if I just cut around the base of this so that it's smooth and flat underneath, and then the only hole I have is this hole right here, and I slide their flashing up on top of it. <coughs> and uh, the uh, inventor basically said it was fine to do that. So we're gonna, that's what we're going to do. So what I've already done is I've taken uh, this one over here, and I've cut around the base of this with a Dremel tool. So I use these cutoff discs. These are um, composite cutoff discs. They look like fiberglass or something like that to me. I have some uh, abrasive ones that are an orange, reddish orange color and they wear out really fast. So these are actually the ones you want to use and when they're new they're actually quite a bit bigger than this. But I just basically take the Dremel and cut around um, the outside of this and just make sure I deburr it once I'm done, give it a nice uh, smooth edge and remove that conical section. At the top of the conical section is that extra towards the edge of the roof is this rubber seal so that rubber seal comes off and then the steel piece comes off that the steel collar that you saw on the other one. And once that happens, the next step is basically to cut this down to what the directions say is an inch and a half. So we're actually going to cut this pipe. This is the scary part because you're kind of committed once you do this. Uh, but I've already done a couple of these and they're actually really easy to install. And what I found was that this piece of wood right here uh, equals an inch and a half when it's laid across the existing shingle. And by doing that, I can actually use that as a cutting guide, and I can just start cutting the pipe. And when I do this, it's going to cut it at pretty much the perfect angle that the roof is already set out, which is 23 and a half degrees in this case. Uh-oh. Broke it. That one broke. Yeah, it's probably already weak there because the other ones haven't broken like that. Uh, shouldn't make any difference though. So then what I need to do is slip this part right here into this gasket. So I slip this underneath the shingle and if you've ever done this on a roof you're going to find that there are actually nails right along each of these lines potentially nails. And if this hits one, I'm going to have to basically um, gently pop that up. This one's fine. And this one actually feels like there's a nail right there. And there's two in there though. Uh, right. right there. So what I'm going to try to do is only pull nails um, that I know are going to be covered by the flashing. And I'm also going to use some roofing caulk on all of them to make sure they're sealed. My favorite tool is not here. I'm just reseating that nail underneath there by keeping this on the top of the nail. Oh, it's cracked. Oh, right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably did that when they cut it. Wow, and that one is almost there. So, there's two more nails, which is not surprising, and those are going to be up here along this nail line. Loosen the shingles first.
and then I try to feel for that nail. And there's it right there. I like my kickboard. It works. And I just gently pop that guy up. one on the other side. There. You could just hammer them in though, right? The nails? Um, it, I, to hammer them in, I would have to pop them through this layer of shingle so that there's a hole in the shingle then, and then hammer them in, which um, I can either do that or I can, having pulled that nail out, actually pull up the layer that it was going through, put the nail underneath there and seal it, and then that hole is sealed with sealant, and then seal, put a little sealant on the top of the hole up there. Um, if if I had removed this flashing, the problem would be a lot worse because this flashing, the existing flashing, is a lot bigger than the solar reef jack flashing. Actually, this one, that one might actually be the same size, but another one that I removed, um, this is a one and a half, the two inch might be wider, and it would, and the nails would be going all the way across the top. Those nails would be very difficult to remove and put back in. So I don't want to even hit those, I don't want to mess with them. Let's see, so what did I do? Now I've forgotten where I was at this one. Oh, there it is right there. And this has to go underneath there. There. Pull that one up. Get that nail, pop it out. And there it is. So what I've noticed is on the other two, I only had to pull out two nails in order to get this to work. And if I had pulled out this whole flashing, there would be, uh, I would think, at least six, six nails, possibly eight. And. So it won't quite go all the way up, and that's simply because I have to cut around this roofing material a little bit. There's my knife. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut straight across here. Generally with this composite shingle, you don't have to really cut all the way through it. You just have to kind of score it and then break it. Okay, and then it's seated and you can actually see the ceiling gasket, possibly you might be able to see in there, the ceiling gasket sealed against the one and a half inch pipe. I don't know if you can, it's kind of dark. Yeah. Oh, there it is, perfect. And then you can see that little Brecken section that snapped off when I was cutting it, which I haven't had that issue yet, but you can see it's well above the gasket, so it's not going to be a problem. And that's uh, the basic installation. After this comes uh, plugging the two inch pipe and running it up. Um, and as you saw before, I, I'm going to have to use limbo pipes to get underneath my uh, solar roof rack XR100 rail, basically. 
and that's it. Oh, one last thing, yes. This flashing, I have it in here loose. Um, it'll need to be tacked down uh, just like the, un the flashing underneath it. And this aluminum is much heavier than that uh, the steel, galvanized steel that was there before. So you'll actually have to do a pilot holes first and then screw through it. And that's it. Thanks for watching.